In this video, we're going to be talking about Standings Day Gecko Care. Anyways, let's roll the intro. Welcome to Royal and Knowles, my friends. Let's get into the video. Now, if any of y'all have been watching my videos, there's something missing. Now, that's my care guide hat. Now, we can actually talk about care. Now, since these are an arboreal gecko, obviously, you want to house them in something a little taller, like that one behind me. Now, the exact cages I recommend to keep an adult in is an 18 by 18, 24. Now, if you have a baby or juvenile, I would go smaller and use tubs. These guys can grow pretty fast if you got them all on the right stuff like I'm telling you in this care guide. As you know, arboreal gecko, they're not gonna do cool stuff when there ain't nothing in the enclosure. So what do you do inside the enclosure? Now I recommend throwing in a good variety of sticks, plants, and even pipes. Pipes of bamboo, essentially. I forget, you know, bamboo sticks where they can go inside. Or, um, you know, PVC pipes where they can go inside. So they can go in there, and feel nice and secure so they feel good to lay their eggs, hide, and eat, do all their cool stuff. So they feel good in there. That's what I recommend doing inside the enclosure. And plants just have that extra cover so when they're outside of the pipes or away from where they like to hide, they can feel a little more secure while being more out in the open. But pretty much when you're doing UVB for these guys, because plenty of people for surprisingly... Oh, Gecko's doing weird stuff over there. Plenty of people surprisingly don't offer day geckos UVB. Me personally, I don't get why you don't, you know, it's weird because, you know, these guys out during the day just makes sense to give them UVB. Plus, they're prettier when you do it. So there's your reason the why you should give them that. So what kind of UVB, though, you know, do they want to be like your bearded dragons with that hot, just making them feel like a crispy potato? No. You want to give them something like an Arcadia 6 Apprentice or a Repti Sun 5.0. Something gets there to be more tropical because these guys more, you know, they come from Madagascar. It's a tropical little island. So we want to keep in the lines of something a little bit more tropical for these guys so they don't get too much UVB because too much UVB can be bad. Now, since we talked about UVB, let's move to the next one. UVA. UVA is a pretty good thing to offer these guys. It's, as you know, it's a big enhancer in your immuno system and what's the other thing it's a mood enhancer a immuno system boost it um enhances color as well like uvb does it also does seem to have some kind of benefit with growth it's just an overall plus that you'll get pretty much if you buy most arcadia products they'll say it but plenty of the arcadia products do have it already pre-built into their heat bulbs and a set now since we talked about the heat bulbs let's move on into that your basking spot you should have it anywhere from 90 to 95 max i do not recommend really going anywhere over it now they can tolerate higher temperatures but that gets into more complex stuff than you know what we're talking about in this video so i wouldn't recommend going any higher than 95 then you want to have it a little basking spot you know 95 to 90 then you want to move down your your gradient to this 80 you know 85 to 80 all the way till we get down to here then we want to keep it cooler to run your room temp so it allows them to have an option to be hot option to be more ambient oh, i'm chilling this is nice and like eh, i want to be a little colder so they'll go down here it gives them options hey so since you've been watching this video so far i noticed you're not subscribed nor did you like this video or even tell your good friends hell even your family so why don't you do me a big favor, a big solid, help me out. You know, I'm trying to do some cool stuff over here, but I need your help. So how about you sub to the channel, like it, share it to your friends and family, even leave a comment. I'll talk to y'all. You know, I have all my socials, same name, rolling those. Now, humidity. Humidity and day geckos almost sounds like something that is perfect and meant to be, because it is. So when you're doing all your stuff to keep the humidity high in your cage, well, you need to do this first off. You need to make sure it stays at a solid 40, which is pretty easily because that's what's commonly seen in our homes, to a nice, lovely 75. Now, what I like to do, me personally, is this. I like to keep it at a solid 50 to 60 throughout the day, have it raise up later in the day, right before I shut off the lights, give a heavy mist down at night, so they're going to be running around before they, um, you know, they go out, take their naps, or they just don't be as active as they are in the day. All that cool stuff. Do that. 
right? They're going to go around, they're going to lick the water, they're going to drink it, they're going to sit on it, they're going to absorb some of it, they're going to have higher humidity, and then when the lights come on, you know, they're going to, it's going to evaporate, and they're going to be a little bit more humid, all that cool stuff, they're going to be more hydrated, is what I meant to say. They're going to be more hydrated than they would be in another situation. That's what I do. If you're doing something different and it works for you, that's good for you. I love to hear it. Actually, tell me how you're doing it, and I'm going to see if I can implement it myself. Now, there's plenty of ways to, you know, do it. And another way I'd recommend is obviously, you know, deeper substrate, plants, all that stuff helps hold in humidity. If you have a screen mesh, like you can see there, I have a bit of it there. I kind of have a bit of it taped off more in the back to keep humidity locked in. And that's what you like to do. Now, you should also offer dry out periods where you don't spray down as much or do this for maybe a couple days. So it isn't just super humid all the time. And allow new air to come in to, so you know no respiratory infections happen because the biggest issue of respiratory infection is are too much humidity and not enough new air now when it comes to feeding these guys it's very simple now when it comes to feeding these guys it's fairly simple because if you put food in front of them they'll eat like most day geckos so when you're doing this you want to offer them a main diet of crickets red runner roaches, fast moving prey, because that's what they seem to enjoy. Now you should also offer some doobie, a variety of different kinds of proteins and all that. Now your more fatty feeders, like all your, pretty much all your worms, to be honest, if you not, not earthworms, not those kind of worms, like, you know, like your silks, horns, all them super mealworms, all them things. You know, you want to offer them less because they're more fatty animals and these guys really can pack on fat fairly easily, you know, don't let them hear that. They're going to they're going to rip my head off next time I feed them. Ooh. But you should also offer them things like fruit. Now, you can feed them things like a straight up piece of a banana or a straight up piece of really most fruit, honestly. Do your research. There are some with almost everything that are bad. No. But an easy guideline is just offer them some of that. Let me Let me grab it. Some of this crested gecko food. Because they'll eat it like that. As you see there with that blue thing there, they'll come climb on it. They'll go grab that bowl that's empty because I'm not feeding them it today because they're getting crickets later. You know, they're going to get that. They're going to eat all of it, all that lovely stuff. Now, the kind of crested gecko foods I recommend are apricot and this and the red one with insects. I recommend going with the insects and heavy protein ones because we're trying to benefit them as much as possible in captivity. Now, standings day geckos can be easily bought for some wild cots here and there when the imports come in. Do I recommend buying them, Joe the pet keeper? No, I don't. Now, here's why. Now, if you're buying a wild caught animal in general, one, the animal's not going to like you as much because, well, they're from the wild. Two, you're grabbing an animal out the wild, so now all those kids that they could have helped reproduce, all the other stuff they could have had effect on the wild, just won't happen anymore because they're removed from the equation, which will have effects years and years down the road in a weird manner. So that's just another thing that kind of makes a little oof on getting some wild cots. And another issue of getting a wild cot is, well, parasites, diseases, and genuinely you just don't know how these animals were kept or raised during the importing of there to here or how they were in the wild. Because you don't know if these animals are living 10 out of 10 lives in the wild, which they probably weren't, because it's nature. Nature is horrible. No, let me rephrase that. Nature is beautiful, but it's also horrible. Yeah. So those are some reasons not to get a wild